Hello and welcome to another Pico TV how-to production. In this film we'll be taking a look at the updated PC9192 10-foot wheelbase milk and oil tank wagons. The kits have now been updated with new NEM pockets and new transfer designs. They've also retained working suspension which is seldom seen in the hobby and even more rare in the ready-to-run models. Now before we start, we need the right tools to do the job and we recommend the Pico Tools Kit Builders Toolset, the PT200. For this project, you will also require these items to assist with your build. Right, let's take a look at what's in the box. On the reverse of the card insert, you'll find examples of different versions of the liveries and instructions. Keep them to one side as you may require them for reference during your build. You also have two sets of transfers with each kit depending on the livery you wish to use, although more research on the internet will always be beneficial. We start off by assembling the buffer beams by pushing the buffer shanks through the holes into the buffer mouldings until they snap into place. Fit the plastic springs into the beam mouldings, noting the correct orientation and check that the spring arms push back against the buffer shanks. Fit the NEM pockets onto the hole on the underside of the buffer beam assembly, making sure it's square and perpendicular to the buffer beam face. Attach the two metal axle guard brackets to the main chassis mouldings and fit in place by bending the tabs into the recesses on the top of the chassis. Cement the sole bar and buffer beam assemblies into the chassis again, making sure you keep glue away from the moving parts. Insert the bearings into the axle box units, pushing down firmly into position. Insert the unit into the axle guards sideways and then twist to lock them in place. Make sure that the lugs, the L shapes, are in position behind the axle guard brackets. Check the vertical movement of the axle box and file the metal edges from the inner edge of the axle guard brackets if they're too tight a fit. Then gently spring the wheel sets into place by carefully easing the axle guards outwards checking that they run freely and adjust the axle guard angle if needed. Cut off the inner brake shoes not required for this particular model from the brake hanger units and cement in position on the chassis. Then cement the brake levers in place. Locate the metal weight in the cradle mould inside the bottom half of the tank moulding and cement the top half of the tank, trapping the weight in place. Then add the tank lid. Painting the tank. We would advise painting the body of the tank and applying the transfers at this stage. Cement the tank body into the locating lugs on the chassis and cement the tank and the supports in position, ensuring that they are also fitted to the location slots on the ends of the chassis. Then cement the four tank turnbuckles in position. Add the horizon tension rods using the thicker of the two lengths of wire supplied. Straighten the wire and then push through the holes in the ends of the support, leaving approximately 0.5 millimeters protruding at the end of each arm, representing the retaining nuts. Adding the angle tension wires using the thinner wire supplied by cutting into lengths of approximately 30 millimeters. Glue into place using super glue on one end of the recess in the tank support arms and the other behind the angled projection on the sole bar.
The ladders are optional and should be cemented in place if required. And there we have it, a completed Shell BP oil wagon ready to go on the layout. So whether you want to build a rake of dairy wagons or whether you want to have a rake of oil containers, these are the perfect choice for your pre-1937 layout. Thank you.